Welcome back to part two, uh, discussing the Audio Exclusive Program. Now we are heading deep, deep into the inner workings of the Audio Exclusive Program. This is what really gets me excited about Audio Exclusive. Quick backstory, a D2S8 was my first venture into F-segment sedans, uh, which are the big full-size limousines, and I loved... Hi, Pepper. I loved the back seat um, adjustable power headrests and the lumbar. And I also loved that it was one of the 300 Audi exclusive uh, final edition S8 in Cognac and it had Audi exclusive embossed on the side of the headrest. This kind of stuff really sets the A8 apart from other cars. So I've got a selection of things from my D3 W12 as well as my D4. I think that arguably the D3 has some of the cooler things um, but certainly the D4 has a lot of cool stuff. And like I said in the first video, this pertains mostly to the D4, but I just wanted to briefly show you a couple things about the D3. One of my first favorite things, hi Pepper, good boy, love you. One of my first, or sorry, just all time, favorite option I think Audi exclusive and Audi themselves ever put out is what's called a bar compartment. So this is the D3 version. Um, I'm going to try not to drone on and on, but I get really tied up in details and that kind of thing. And also kind of paints the picture. This replaced the rear center headrest. So it was only available on four seater cars. What it contains being a bar compartment is two Audi exclusive glasses for the champagne cooler. And it is leather wrapped and lined with Alcantara that would have been coordinated with your interior and has two Audi exclusive laser etched tumblers, rocks glasses rather. And the little uh, location that they sit into is ringed with aluminum and the slot is machined just perfectly so that it slides down into its slot in a slow dampened manner. Anyway, I'm droning on already. So bar compartment. I think that is so James Bond and amazingly cool. Uh, also, way up there with absurd is the MMI remote. So this would allow rear seat passengers to control the MMI from the back. The screen is not very big in the D3. So it is actually usable. Sometimes you lean forward to be able to see what you want to do, but the buttons are laid out basically the same way as the MMI panel for the front seat. Um, this is the scroll wheel, and then it has a button in the center, and then these are the four soft keys that surround the button, and then this is the volume um, scroll wheel. Some of them don't have the car button, uh, which does make some sense in that you can't mess with the dynamics of the car from the back seat. Um, and it's functional, which is cool. That way I can mess with things like the ambient lighting and that sort of thing from the back seat. Very cool, D3. And then the other little item that I brought, not so little from the D3 is this. Um, so this is housed in something that is extremely rare. This is a short rear center console. So um, you've probably seen the four-seater where the console runs the full length of the car. This is a console that was only supplied in cars that did not specify full-length center console, but ordered the fax machine. So this is genuinely a fax slash printer slash photocopier. It was a travel fax machine that you could get put into a box designed by Audi. This was also available in the D2, which makes it even more insane because that would have been, I guess around 2000, 2001, this would have been first offered, but it was not custom and tailor made into its own sort of situation. It was just kind of stuffed into the armrest of the D2 and it was just the shape of whatever this manufacturer's fax machine was. But for the D3, it's so much more bespoke in that it's fit into this box with this little roll top. And the only way that you got this short console is if you did not spec full length center console and you bought the fax machine. So this is hyper rare. Um, and it also has an audio exclusive wood, which is interesting. Um, 
So very cool. Anyway, again, I'm droning on, um, but D3 stuff, insane. Now we're gonna move to D4 items. I sp spoke about the exclusive wood in the first video. The wood in my car was actually specced with an Audi exclusive wood, but that exclusive wood only extends to the normal uh, inlays. Uh, mine's a four seater, so it has the cover in between the two rear seats. But other than that, it was just like any other A8 where it was the doors and the back of the seat and the front and rear console and the dash. Um, but I wanted all of the exclusive pieces that you could extend, meaning the steering wheel and the shifter and the grab handles and um, the rear tables, and I'll get to that. Uh, so I had to hunt these down. I found a car that was being parted that had basically the full interior package, had shifter, steering wheel, grab handles. The only problem being that the headliner wasn't black like mine, so I had to have the handles themselves recolored. Very cool, love this. I think that this is the most appropriate change that I've made to the car. I initially took the leather shifter, which I thought was very odd, and changed it to piano black and it matched the console. But after I found and swapped in the wood shifter, I've been extremely happy with it. And then here is the steering wheel, a close up of it. Really interesting how they segmented it. I didn't like it at first when I saw it, I thought it was weird. Um, it's the kind of thing that doesn't really photograph well. It's also very difficult to find photos of uh, a D4 wood steering wheel, but I decided I had to have it probably just because of the sickness in my head that loves rarity. And this is very rare. Plus being an, an exclusive veneer was really over the top. Next, we have these little gems. These are directional reading lights. And these were about a thousand euro option, which is crazy. I'll pop up on the screen exactly. I think they were just under a thousand euro or 1100. I don't remember. But it's just two lights. And I'll show a little video of it working right now. But just two lights that go above the rear passengers and it's on these two axes that allow you to direct the light exactly where you want it. Very cool, kind of like airline style lighting. Um, there are six LEDs as opposed to the single LED for the standard lights. And it's much brighter, but it's more focused, which makes it very usable and not distracting like the other um, just single sort of floodlight. These uh, have been available uh, with the D3 and the D4 and D5. Um, there's a new part number, but I'm pretty sure they're the exact same. This is a rear footrest. Um, it's carpeted, and then the bottom has these little grippy mat. Uh, it is three position angle. You can go flat, and then there's a shorter position if you lift up this smaller little arm and then full height extension. This actually uh, makes the rear seat far more comfortable. You probably want the long wheelbase before you go hunting one of these down because they uh, do take up a fair amount of space, but I find that the seat position of the D4 is much less optimized than the D3. I think it has to do with the contour and the seat cushion depth and height. But anyway, this makes the back seat so much more comfortable. And you see this a lot in Bentleys and Rolls Royce and the Phaeton had it as well. Also the seven series, I'm sure the S class did as well, but very cool. So a adjustable footrest. This item was painfully difficult to find. Uh, I stumbled on these and I had not even seen a photo of what these look like. It's a headrest pillow. I'll just get to it. Uh, so headrest pillow. These I didn't know if really existed. I have some for the D3 W12 A8, but I had never seen these for the D4. I came across these. These were brand new in the box and I couldn't believe my luck. Um, you can buy these apparently from the dealer still. They are, New Year's makes no difference, $1,000 each. So if you want a pair for that, it's $2,000 for just headrest cushions. Um, I have since found two more 
that are uh, nougat, and I use those for a little while. They sort of match the cognac in my car, and it was a good look. But then I found two more black uh, headdress. I've bought every single pair that I've ever found, and those are the only six that I've ever seen in photos or for sale uh, altogether. Now, this was not available to spec in Audi exclusive colors. It was only available in um, black and nougat, uh, but it was on the Audi exclusive list. I like that uh, they didn't just throw elastic on the back. They more or less calculated how much was needed in order to fit it over the wings of the headrest, and the rest is still leather. Um, there, it's vented in the back so that the air can be relieved, and it has three panels. So unlike BMWs, if you've ever used their um, extendable headrest cushions that bunch up with the leather in the center, it keeps it flat in the middle. Uh, it also has a really thick loft. So these are another game changer for comfort. Um, and like I said, I have a pair in the back and a pair in the front. Um, so very comfortable to drive in the car. Next, we have the Audi exclusive drinking glasses. So unlike the D3 that have rocks glasses, the D4 uses tumblers. Uh, I believe in the US, uh, the champagne cooler came with this style and size glass, but they were stored inside the champagne cooler, which is very un inelegant. Um, but for the D4, they went back to this size and it is the bar compartment is underneath the armrest in the rear. It's decidedly much less cool than the D3 solution, which I love so much, but it's still cool to open up the armrest and show your friends that you have drinking glasses built into your car. So moving down the list, I didn't take them out of my car because I thought that'd be silly. I'll just show you a video are the uh, folding tables for the back seats. I found two of these months ago, probably actually probably a couple years ago um, in Poland and had them shipped over and they were lost at sea and I was devastated, but they were piano black. I thought that they would be fine, I could make it work, whatever. But then uh, they were lost and so I searched for months and months and months and I may have stopped searching if I had those with the Piano Black. So I suppose it's lucky that they're lost because I actually found a pair with my Audi exclusive veneer. These tables, not only could you order them one or both sides, you could also have them personalized with logos and scripts. And last item that I have brought in from my car are the Audi exclusive floor mats. These are very different from the standard mats. They are about twice as deep a pile as the standard mats. And then they also have foam on the back, which makes them extra cushy. What really sets them over the top though is that the piping is done in leather. And then to finally, to complete the list of Audi exclusive items, you could spec the champagne cooler individually. Most of the time it came in the package with the rear executive seat with the fold out leg rest and the writing table. Uh, that was available individually, both in North America and in Europe. Then there were personalized door sills. I don't know what I would even put on mine if I could spec that. I suppose it's kind of like personalized vanity license plates. It could either be cool or it could be super lame. I've got a couple examples. I'll flash those up on the screen. Uh, and then finally, one uh, item that has eluded me completely. I've not seen a picture of this. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know exactly how it functions, but a locking rear storage compartment. So I'm assuming this goes under the rear armrest. Um, but anyway, that concludes the list of Audi exclusive uh, options um, for the second video. I will tally everything from the first video and the second video uh, to show what you could spec your D4 A8 W12 up to. Uh, it's amazing to see what the total is over a decade ago. I'll also adjust it for inflation. Um, crazy number. It really shows that this truly could have been a competitor and bled into some of the uh, Bentley Flying Spur sales for sure. Um, and then also on the other side, I'll list uh, the European parts that you couldn't get in the US and uh, tally for those. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, 
there's so much more to say. There's so many more fine little details, but again, I try not to drone in these videos. Um, if you are looking for any of this stuff, it can be very difficult to find. A lot of times there were not part numbers for these things. These were just ordered and the Audi factory would, well, Quattro would uh, build these by hand and then put them in your car. These weren't stocked. These weren't available on the parts list, which makes them even more special, I think. Anyway, I've got uh, some other videos highlighting a lot of these functions individually. Over time, I'll have a video dedicated to each individual option um, just to make them easier to find. Uh, but anyway, that does it for now. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And join the exclusive W12 Owners Club for access to more DIY write-ups, frequently asked questions, and super in-depth info for VW, Audi, and Bentley W12 models. Then visit the W12 OC Club Shop for kit to show off Volkswagen Auto Group's rarest power plant at w12ownersclub.com.